Boker, Boker Tov, today's Daf Yomi is Baba Metzia Daf Lamates, Baba Metzia 39. And we're going to start on 39A, three lines from the top. Here you go, Doror. Here's your page of the Talmud for you. So today's Daf Yomi is Lamates, I'm at Aleph 39A. We're going to dedicate it for a uh, Shmira for the Chayalim, Yeshua for Am Yisrael, Hatzoah for the Shvuyim. So, on 39a, three lines from the top, or four lines from the top, the Gemara cites a bright on that says, the Tana Vekulam, Shaman Lahem Karis. All of them, we look at them like, an, like a sharecropper. What does it mean, Kulam? So basically, we've been discussing a person who somehow disappears and leaves behind his property. In that scenario, in that scenario, if he was captured, we had said that you're allowed to, if the person was captured, then we discussed that you can go into his, into his assets. And and so basically, if we already was captured, if he was captured and he already was dead, we put the people into his assets. We put his relatives to take care of his property. But let's say the field was abandoned. So then, if it was against his will, then then we said under those circumstances, the Rabbi Shimon Gamliel says that the ones who abandoned it against their will are like shavuyan; they're like captives. That you could put a relative into his property. Uh, and that's the position of Rabbi Shimon Gamliel and the Tanakhama argues. So whether or not you put a relative into the abandoned property of somebody. This is talking about a case where you didn't hear that he died. If you heard that he died, everybody says you could do it. But if you don't hear that you die, then the Tanakhama says you can. Uh, and, the court, and Rabbi Shimon Gamliel says that in the case of abandoned, we're going to say that he's like captives and you can, whereas Tanakhama says you can. And what about Ratushim? Ratushim is the property that's abandoned against his will, then they say you can't. So the Kulin, but in all these cases, Shamalam Ka'aris. We're going so our Gemara on 39A says we're going to evaluate the person who goes into the property. If the owner, original owner comes back, we're going to say that the person who took care of the property is like a sharecropper. And so that they share in some of the profits, like whatever the sharecropper's status is in that place. Now the Gemara says, when it says all of them are like a sharecropper, ah, hi, what's it referring to? If it's referring to a person who was captured, it can't be that's the case. There, in that case, we had said explicitly that, that even if he hears that the original owner is coming back and he goes ahead and harvests it, he's entitled to it. So therefore, for sure, does the Bryce and need to tell us that whatever he himself uh, improved it, he's going to be where he had permission to go into it and then just take it when he heard the guy's going back. For sure, he's going to get the improvements. El Aratushim, you want to say, it refers to the one who abandoned, who abandoned the property willingly, almost, uh, meaning to say the guy when uh, the guy goes into the property of somebody who willingly went out, but somebody who goes down to the property of the Ratushim, we learned that we take the property away from such a person. And so therefore, meaning to say he has he has no right, to, nobody has any right to go into the property of somebody who on his own had left it. He wasn't captured. He, he obviously didn't want you to take care of it. So you have no right to go in. It can't be that that's the case. El Anatushim. So we're going to say that it refers to the pro- case of the person who was abandoning the property against his will. And so therefore, somebody who goes into the property of the Natushim Without hearing that he died, that he, he's going to be entitled to reimbursement like a sharecropper. So the Gemara says, well, not according to who? Which position? Remember, we said this was a dispute between the Tanakhama and Shimon Gamliel. Elim, if you want to say that the Brisa is according to the position of the Rabbanon, the Rabbanon said that if you go into the possession of the Natushim, we're going to look at the Natushim as though they are Ratushim and that we force them out of the property. So it can't be that that's the case. That we then go over to say that you're entitled to reimbursement like a sharecropper. 
Ha'amar Shabbat Hashem Netushin Kishvuyim. Rabbi Shimon Gamliel already said that the 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 Netushin are like cap are like Shavuyim. They're like the captives in the sense that you're entitled to go in. So for sure you're reimbursed like a sharecropper. So the Gemara says, okay. So what uh, the said even according to Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, he's not saying it's going according to Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, and it's not saying the Netushin are exactly like the Shavuyim. They're partially like the captives, but they're not completely like the captives. They're like the captives in the sense that we don't kick him off the property. If he went into the property, we don't kick him out. Uh, but they're not like the captives. Because in the case over there of the Shavuyan, we're going to say in the per- cases of the captives, if uh, he before he harvested it, he heard that the owners were coming back, and he quickly goes ahead and does it. Then he's going to uh, be entitled to everything that he ate because since he went there with permission, he's allowed to harvest it. But in the case of the Nutushim, he can't eat the he can consume the harvest after he heard that the owners were 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 using it and coming. So therefore, Shaminim like Aris. Therefore, we look at him like a sharecropper and what he's entitled to. So the Gemara says, Umay shna, why is this case of somebody who goes down into the assets of the Shvuyan? How is it the case different from the case of a husband and a wife? Like we learned in Kisubos. Umay shna, me other tenan. We learned in a, in a toset, usually tenan is a Mishnah in Kisubos. To tenan, hamotzi hayotzo, sam nechse ishto, somebody. Somebody who spends money on his wife's property. His wife has what's called nirsei mulug. That means she's entitled to the principal, but the husband gets the fruits of the marriage while they're married. And so therefore, let's say whatever he spends on her property, whether he spends a lot of money to take care of the property and he only got a little bit in return, or Kim, or whether he spends a little, or whether he... Um, or whether he put out a little bit of money and he got a lot of profit. Masha hotzi hotzi masha acho acho. In that case, we say whatever he spent, he spent, and whatever he ate, he ate. Meaning to say, he doesn't get any of that property back. He only, uh, he only whatever fruits he got, he got. And so, therefore, why do we say there he takes like the share crack, sharecropper who went down into the assets of the captive property he was entitled to a, a certain whatever the going rate is of reimbursement for his expenses. And Laura says, no, hello, Damia, that case is totally different. The The case of somebody goes into the sharecroppers, uh, into, the, into the property of the person who was captured is not similar to somebody who spends money on his wife's property, but it's rather it's similar to a different type of wife. Because there was a case of what's called a person who married to a minor woman after her father or her husband had died. Excuse me. After a father died, a man marries a minor woman, and so that's called only a rabbinic marriage. So she has the right to reject that marriage at any time. And so therefore, Now somebody has that property, but he could lose it at any second. So therefore, what is he supposed to do? So since we're, we're not sure what's going to happen there, so therefore the marriage is only rabbinic. And the rabbi said, the, the Kedushin is only going to be canceled. The could any second be canceled. And so therefore, and so therefore, it's like he's putting this property in somebody else's field. And so therefore, and so therefore, Alma, we see from there, since he's not certain that it's going to remain in his possession, so since the rabbis were concerned that he could take under those circumstances like a sharecropper because we don't want him to lose completely his rights, uh, all of his money, and nobody else would take care of the property in the meantime. And so therefore, so too in this case, here too the rabbis instituted somebody put in assets into the property that he goes into like a captive person that he's going to be entitled He's going to be entitled to reimbursement in the same ratio that a sharecropper would be re-entitled. We're in 39A, 39A. So the Gemara says, Bikulan Shalom Shamil and Ka'aris, that the Bryce says that all of them are are going to be viewed as like a sharecropper. Meaning to say, what is it so the the 
The Gemara wants to establish this. What's this coming to include? What circumstances is the price coming to include that says that they're all going to take like a sharecropper? So the Gemara says it's coming to include the following case. Last suya, it's coming to include Hada Amr Rav Nachman Amr Shmuel. It's coming to include the case of where Rav Nachman told the name of Shmuel, Shavoy Shanishba, Morid and Karavun Achasav. Let's say there's a, a person who is captured. You're allowed to put a relative into his estate. Because he went out against his will, but Yatzel Adas. But if he, but if the person went out willingly, then Aimorid and Karavon Chasab. Then we don't put a relative into his estate because since he could have appointed somebody else to take care of his property, that means he doesn't want it to, and so therefore we are not going to allow him to be treated like a sharecropper. Rav Nachman Zidei Amar, Rav Nachman himself said. Even if he runs away, he's like a, he, we view him like a capture pur- purpose, and therefore we put a relative to take care of the estate. Why is he running away? If he is running away because the tax collector is after him, and so uh, he runs away, well, I know does. That's willingly. El Barach Machmas Mardin. So we're talking about a case who ran away because they were he he was running away from the law because he he did something wrong. He presumably he killed somebody, and so therefore, and so therefore he he didn't have time to appoint somebody else. And so therefore we're going to look at it as like Netushim that we put a relative into the estate and he's entitled to and that relative is going to be entitled to reimbursement like a sharecropper. So now we have the following case. Amar of Yehuda, Amar Shmuel, Shavoy Shanishba. Let's say there's a person who's captured. Ve'iniach Kama, Litzor. And he left behind, when he was captured, he left produce in the field that one could harvest. Or Anavim Litzor, or grapes to harvest, or Tamaram Litzor, or dates to harvest, or Zaytim Limsok, or olives to uh, to harvest. So under those circumstances, Based in your dinul chasav, under those circumstances, we don't put a relative to take care of it. If the court does it, ma'amidin apatrapas, and we appoint an executor. The court appoints an executor to take care of the property. So vekotzer ubotzer vegoder umosik, and the sharecropper harvests, and he does all of these things. Ubotzer vegoder umosik. He does all these things that you have to do to the fruits to get the fruits to. So the owner comes back. Only after the person removes the fruits from the field, only then do you put in the relative on the chasa. Uh, and, and so the Gemara wants to know why afterwards you put in the relative. The Why don't we put the executor there to take care of it forever? The court appoints an executor. Then Gemara says, Gemara says, The executor is a volunteer position. And so therefore, since the executor is a volunteer position, they're not going to want to do it for this older person forever. They're only going to want to do it for a little bit. With Diknani, Diknani is an older person, an elder. He's got a beard. So he's only going to do it on a limited basis until he gets the fruits harvested. And then that person will get 100%. Well, once that's taken care of, then for the future, move a relative. And the relative is entitled to reimbursement like a sharecropper on the property. Okay, so now... Well, this is just like real world practical ruling. So I'm Rav Huna. Now Rav Huna taught Ain Moridin Katan Wanechse Shavai. Rav Huna said we don't put a minor Ain Moridin Katan Wanechse Shavai. We don't put, I'd say the relative is a minor. We're not going to put the minor into the property of the person who was captured because the minor doesn't know what he's doing. How's he going to take care of it? And we don't put a relative into the property of the minor because, because we're concerned that that basically this is something the adult will say he would have inherited. So you put a stranger who can't who can't claim that. So rather what you do is you put a Non-relative. The low-carov. Hold on. Rashi says, not a relative into the property of a... Not a... Not... Ain't more than cut on the shop. But the low-carov, not a relative into the property of a minor. Rashi says, this refers to our royal yarish but not We don't put a relative who would who's in line to inherit the minor 
into the miner's property to work and to eat it. Because in the same time, as the Gemara is going to explain, the kivin de katan lo yadalim chuye. Since the miner doesn't know how to object, the relative will come. Ben, the relative will come and say, "This was mine." And he's saying that, and the relative will claim that he came there to inherit it, and so therefore, better. So basically, they could be adversarial. The relative and the minor could have conflicting interests, and so therefore, you're better off putting in a, a, a non-relative. We can claim that that was part of his inheritance. Well, Karov Machmas Karov Koton. And even if he's not a relative of the minor, but rather he's a relative of a relative, we don't put him into the estate. The Gemara is going to say what this is referring to. What does it mean when it says, Why do we not put a minor into the property of a captured person? The reason is, because maybe the minor is going to destroy the property. So even if he's a relative, we don't put him into the property. Karov Machmos Karov Koton. And we don't put a relative of a relative into the property of a minor. What we're talking about there is ba'achim There we're talking about a case where he is a paternal brother, meaning to say we don't put down a a person. We don't put a man who is his his maternal brother. That his maternal brother has a paternal brother. Meaning to say, we don't take a person whose paternal brother is the maternal brother of the person we want to put in. Because what's going to happen, we have to be concerned that maybe this person will claim that he was inheriting because he's going to inherit from this man. And so therefore, we don't allow it. The low car of katan. And we don't put a relative into the estate of the minor. Because since the minor doesn't know how to object, He's not able to object. So therefore, this person will say, listen, I was in this property, it was mine. And so the adversarial interests. Oh, now we have this principle of Rav Huna who says that you don't put a relative into the, into the estate of the minor, but somebody uh, who is not a relative, you can put him into the estate of the minor. Why? Because generally speaking, the person is in a property for three years and nobody comes with a claim, then we have a presumptive status that it's his. But if the one who owned it was a minor, we don't have to be concerned that they would claim it. Even if the minor, if uh, even if he even if he retained the field three years after after the minor became an adult, we still don't allow that to be a presumptive status because once since when he started to take the field, the person who has the claim against it was a minor, meaning to say he doesn't know that the field was his father's. And so this is proof from Rafuna's position who says that a relative, we don't put him into the estate of his minor, which means another person we do. And if we're saying that you're going to have a presumptive status, why are we going to put somebody else into the estate? Are we concerned? And he's going to have it for three years. So we see from here that the chazaka, the presumptive status that you own the property, doesn't work if you're going up against the minor. And when do we say that you don't put a relative in the estate of a minor only if it is your paternal brother? But if it's ima, but if it's your maternal brother, we don't have to be concerned that maybe he's going to be grabbing a hold of the estate of the assets because he's not inheriting with him. And so therefore... Therefore, we would be able to put them down into the estate to take care of it because he can't say, oh, this was my land that I inherited. Now the Gemara says, there's another distinction in the laws of Rav Huna. When it's his paternal brother that we say we don't put them into the estate of the minor, we only said this by, by land, by fields, because then we have to be concerned that he grabbed a hold of them. And nobody's going to be able to testify that it was the minors. But if it was houses, then we don't have to be concerned. Because since the neighbors know, they know who got what. The neighbors are always looking around and saying, oh, there are houses on the market. And the neighbors know everything about it. When it comes to fields, the neighbors don't know. When it comes to houses, everyone's on top of it. And furthermore, even when it comes to land, we only say it, it did not. Only when a circumstance, then when they didn't make a a, a contract, 
mean to say when we don't clearly spell things out with a contract? If you write it down, when there's a contract and it's all out there on paper, everybody's going to know. And that's not the case. We don't put the relative and all the, we, we, we reject all these distinctions that uh, that we just established about paternal brother versus maternal brother, land versus houses, and contract versus non-contract. In all these cases, we don't put a relative into the estate of the minor, meaning to say, you not it's not it's not foolproof and and so therefore we're not going to allow it. We have to take extra special precautions to protect the estate of the minor. Nagamar is going to have two very interesting stories. One story they can even make a movie about. Aisa after this is the first story. The first story is that there was a, a was a woman who was a grandmother. Let's call her Sarah. Davila Tlas Benasa. She had three daughters. Let's call them Rivka, Rachel, and Leah. So there was this this grandmother, Sarah. She had three daughters, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah. Uh, so Sarah was captured with one of her daughters. Let's say she was captured with Rivka. And the other two daughters, let's call them Rachel and Leah. One of them died. Let's say Rachel died and left behind a child called Benjamin. So now, now Sarah and Rebecca are in captivity. And Benjamin and Leah are back in the mainland. So what would be the law? Amar by Hechinavid, what are we going to do with the assets of this Safta that was captured? We don't know if she's alive or dead. Look, Minu Bida Dachasa. If we're going to say, if we're going to say, let's take the assets of the Safta and we'll put it in the sister that's remaining. I.e. in the in the in Tolea, and Tolea, you take care of it. Like Rav Shimon Hamuel said, that we put the relatives into the assets of the captured person. That can't work. Dilma Shchiva Safta. Maybe she's dead, and so therefore she leaves behind your three daughters. And since one of the daughters is no longer there, now we have Benjamin, and so now Leah is taking care of Benjamin's property. But you can't have a relative taking care of a minor's property. So email reading Carvel Nachsikaton. You can't do that. You don't have a relative taking care of a minor's property. Uh, so we put the estate into the hands of the minor. That's another problem. But maybe the Safta is not dead. And we said, We don't put a minor into the hands of a captured person. So what are we supposed to do? Says Abaye. What we're supposed to do is Palga. First of all, you divide it in half and you take half of the assets. And you give it to the to Leah, the man of Shach. That if the Safta is dead and also the daughter is dead, well, then she's going to have half the estate. And if they didn't die, well, then she's the relative of the Safta and she goes into the estate and she takes care of it and she gets reimbursed like a sharecropper. The Edach Palga and the other half, for the other half, we appoint an executor. Meaning to say, we put into the hands of the minor, but we don't, we don't go into the estate, into his assets, because we have to be concerned. Maybe she didn't die, so therefore we put an executor who will, uh, who will handle the property. So for on behalf of the minor, and the minor will be treated like a sharecropper. Rabbi Amar, migu dum mukmina na petrapol apalga mukmina le apetrapol idach He says, well, once we're appointing an executor, why don't we appoint an executor for the whole thing? Where it says, and then they heard that the Safta had died, but they didn't hear about, they heard Sarah died, but they didn't hear Rebecca died. So Amar Baya, so now we have to do one third you give to the Safta, the other third you give to the grandmother, and the other third, you give one six straight out to the sister because she has the ability to lay, she has the ability to go into Rivka's property and to deal with it. The other six you give to the executor to take care of uh, who's taking care of the child's estate. He says, 
Once you're pointing an executor for the sixth, you point it for the other six. And that's what he says, once you're doing it. So now we have the second story. Second story is a very interesting story. Mari Bar Isik, Asale Acha. Mari Bar Isik, a brother arrived. Mibe Chosai. So let's basically, the case that we're going to have, you ever hear, you ever hear the movie, The Return of Martin Guerre? Before it was a movie, it was an actual book by Natalie Davis. I think Natalie Davis. Natalie Zeman Davis, professor of medieval history. She wrote a book, The Return of Martin Guerre, where this guy showed up and claimed he was a woman's husband after many years. He didn't have photographs, memories over many years. How do you prove whether or not he's the husband? So we have a very similar story. You know, he, he had ruined with the husband in war, and now he comes back and says, that was me. So now the Gemara has this claim about a person. He says he was the brother of such and such a person, and he wants to get the money because uh, their father died. So who has to bring the proof? So, and we'll see how it relates back to our case. So, Mari Bar Isik Asile Acha Bechuzai. He had a brother from Bechuzai because their father had gone to live in Bechuzai and he married a woman and and he gave birth to this brother there. And and his son Murray was there, and his son started dealing with his father's estate. And now the brother comes along and says, Amarway Puogli. So Murray Bar Asik's brother says, Divide with me the as the estate of our father, because I'm also his, his heir. Amarway will you danwach? So Mari Bar Isik says to his brother, who shows up from Chuzai, he says, I have no idea who you are. I don't know you're my brother. So now they're arguing if he's his brother. Also, Tanmei de Rav Chesta. So they go before Rav Chesta, Amrway, Shop your Kamarwach. Mari Bar Isik saying, Yeah, he's saying, Right, you need to bring proof that you're his brother. How else is he supposed to give you half the estate of your father if he doesn't know if he's your brother? Shinemar, as it states, Vayakar Yosef Esachev, Vehem Uli Kiru. Joseph recognized his brothers. They didn't recognize him. How did Joseph's brother not recognize Joseph? He went out without a beard. He returned with a beard. Meaning to say, yeah, how does he supposed to know you're his brother? You, the brothers don't, wouldn't always recognize you. So I'm away. He says, so Rav Chista says to that brother, go bring witnesses that you're in fact his brother. <laughs> so he says, no, I can't do it. He said, Amrway Isli Saadi. So the brother says, I have witnesses, but Dachawe They're too afraid to testify because the Gavra Limahum, because Murray Bar Isik is a very strong man in the town. Nobody wants to go against him. Amrway. So so Rav Khlifa said to Murray Bar Isik, he said, Amrway with the day, Zio Ant the Isi Sahadi. So he says to Murray Bar Isik, okay, you know what? Your brother can't bring witnesses because you're such a powerful person. So you have to bring witnesses that he is, in fact, your brother. You have to bring witnesses that, in fact, you have to bring witnesses that he is not, in fact, your brother. So Mara Marie says to Christa, I'm right. Dina Hachi, I'm going to make a marrow of a right. Why do I have to bring witnesses? He's not my brother. He wants my money. He should have to bring witnesses that he is my brother. I'm Hachi Danino Ocha. He says, no, this is the law that because you're strong. Go call. He made the I'm he says, this is the law for you and for anyone who's stronger than the person uh, that he, and he has a good reason why he can't bring the witnesses, you have to bring the witnesses. So, 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 in the end, what happened? So, so, in the, in the end, uh, the witnesses will come. Uh, and, and so, so he says, well, if that's the case, Marbury said, well, in the end, let's see the witnesses come. And they're going to testify falsely. Uh, so I'm really no. Tarati go abdi. The witnesses are not are not. We don't suspect that the witnesses are going to make two uh, two uh, sins. Means say, a that they won't come, and b that that when they come that they're going to testify falsely. Meaning to say they're going to come and be silent. They're rather be silent, and so therefore bring them that maybe they'll testify like the brother. It was so also saadi dachuahu. In the end, the witnesses came. They had been afraid to come, but they came. And they testified that, in fact, he's their brother. I'm away. So now the brother says, this goes back to what we're saying. 
Therefore, Glinami mi party say ubustine to shotel says, okay, not only am I entitled to divide the estate, you have to give to me the property that produced it now, the orchards and the gardens that that they that they had produced. So Amale, Rav Chista said to my Barisik, Shaper Kamarach, he's saying good to you because the Tanam, because we weren't in the Mishnah Baba Basra. So let's say the uh, brothers, he left behind, the father left behind for the heirs, adult children and younger children, and the adult children improve the property. They all split it. The minors get a share of the improvements. On the top of 48, that they split it. So, so, so if that's the case, he's entitled to half of it. I'm away by me, dummy. And he says to Rav Chista, that's not the same case. There, in that case, the adults know that the that the assets also belong to the minors, and so therefore they know, even though they're going to improve it, they're going to have to split it with fifty percent with the minors. But here, But here, when he put in the value. Did Mari Barisak know uh, that he has a brother, and so and that and 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 so therefore, who is he didn't know that his brother was going to be involved, and so therefore, you can't say that his that he wanted his brother to receive a portion of the improvements. Galgo Mill, so so the matter was rolling around. Matal came to Rabbi Ami, came in front of Rabbi Ami. Amalu Rabbi Ami said to his students, Gedola Mizu. Furthermore, furthermore, I'll prove to you. There's another factor here, because we say we put a relative into the estate of the captured, and he knows uh, there under those circumstances, we say that if you put a relative into the estate of uh, a captive, Amru Shamo and Ka'aris, and so there he's at least entitled to be improved like a sharecropper, which a sharecropper gets. And so therefore, Hasha, in this incident, the Maribar Isik, the day well, in this case where he improves the property because they were completely is is it not the case that he's going to get uh, at least like an RS? Why does he have to split a 50 50? He should at least get the 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 sharecropper is entitled to an even greater reimbursement. So, meaning to say, there are two reasons why Rav Christa said, okay, just summarizing the case the guy was taking care of his brother's property, but he didn't know his brother was alive, he, he didn't know he had a brother. So Rav Chista said, not only is he your brother, but you have but all the improvements you split 50-50. So first of all, Abayi says, it's not the same case as like a, where it's an adult and a minor child who inherit the property. There you split a 50-50 because the adult waives his rights by the minor. But here, he didn't know the guy existed, that he's waiving rights. He, he shouldn't have to split the profits based upon the work he did. And secondly, says Rabbi Ami, it's why is this different in the case of our mission, where if you go down into the estate of your relative, you're entitled to be reimbursed like a sharecropper. So you shouldn't have to split a 50 50. You should get more. I drew all the Rav Chista. I'm who me dummy. So they brought back the case of Rav Chista. Rav Chista said, two cases are not the same. Hasam versus Nachas. Hachala versus Nachas. In the case of the, in the case where we say you value him like, an, like a sharecropper, that's where the, where the relative went down with permission. But here he didn't have permission. The Odom, furthermore, and furthermore, even if Mari Bar Isak acted according to the court, they wouldn't put him into the estate of his brother because his brother was a minor and he wasn't allowed. So I drew a Kamei Rabbi Ami, Rabbi Ami said, yeah, it's true if that's the case that he was, uh, but if that's the case, but they didn't tell me that the brother was a minor, that he didn't have the right to go into his property. So that changes everything. All right, we'll stop here. I just want to say before everybody goes that we're going to do the Dafiyomi tonight. Baruch